we got to see Rutgers and St. John's a few weeks ago, and that was one I know I was really excited to see because you had the number two and number three ranked prospect in the cast in the class playing together against a high rank or a high level Division One team, and they both played really, really good in my eyes. What are your guys' thoughts? Yeah, I feel like uh, with Ace Bailey and Dylan Harper, there was some high expectations coming in right away, and for them to in their first like actual live footage against a top D1 program like St. John's to look that smooth and that effective right out the gate was pretty encouraging for people who have either Dylan Harper or Ace Bailey as the top player in this upcoming draft class, I feel like. Yeah, my biggest takeaway from the game is they are who we thought they were. They play kind of how you've seen them play in high school, almost the exact same. Like It seemed like nothing changed with the levels almost. Like That game was a really good snapshot of who they are as players. I felt like they really showed their strengths and weaknesses all in one game. Yeah, Ace had a he had that one stretch in the end of the first half where he was just on a, an absolute heater. Three ball after three ball. They had so many turnaround jumpers, which I feel like if, if they can continuously get to that spot and hit that jumper over everyone, it, it's going to be dangerous in the Big Ten. Oh, Ace was on a heater. Like I think it was near the end of that heat check where he was coming down. It was a deep transition pull up cash money. Yeah. Like why did he even take that? But. <laughs> That, I think that speaks to the type of player he is because when he gets hot, like there's nothing you can do to stop him. Yeah, there's like even when he's not hot, he just has a tendency to make shots that just like as a they're like yes, yes, no shots. They're the type of shots <laughs> that as a coach, like that will leave you with gray hairs at the end of the season. But if he makes it, it's like you kind of have to just be quiet a little bit. Like, I know one shot that I'm thinking of that fadeaway. You know, he was being contested. There was like 23 seconds left on the shot clock. <laughs> Why would you take that? I know. And he, I was like, I, when he shot it, I was like, okay. And then like you said, it's a yes, it's a no, no, yes. And then it goes in and it's like, okay, what do you do when he's 6'11"? Yeah, he definitely has like the F it button. Like some mm-hmm. players just have like, they give the rest of their team like a couple seconds to like, okay, are you going to help me? Okay, you're not. I can do this myself. I kind of prefer to do it myself. And if you don't help me in the time I see fit, I'm going to do it myself. Mm -hmm. So definitely with that shot right there, and there was a couple more shots throughout the night where he just hit the button. It was like, uh, okay, no one's cutting. Okay, I'll shoot it. Fine. Who who impressed you guys more? Because uh, both of them scored really well, and even on like the broadcast, they had like freshman tracker, and they had their scoring output. So, who who do you think was better, Ace or Dylan Harper? I'd say Ace, just because he showed that high level of shot making. But I'll, I'll let you go before I give my thoughts on. I feel like Ace had the better game. I think Dylan is the better player still, and from what I've seen, I think Rutgers. The, their offense is more fit for someone like Ace in a way. I think Dylan is, will work better. Like he might, he might come out of this year a little underrated because the spacing in the middle of the lane is will be more compact. I think he's someone who will especially thrive with a more wide open lane. And I think that game showed it really well because there were some times where Harper would get downhill and get in trouble a little bit, but. One thing that was definitely on display for both of them is that they can get to the mid range shot whenever they want. So, no, I agree. I was actually I was gonna say that same thing too because I remember in our group chat when we were talking, I was like, I remember saying I feel like Dylan is a guy who's really gonna eat when he's in the league, but I feel like he's gonna like you said, kind of be underrated just because <clears throat> you could kind of tell like there was times when he would go in and he would they were like sending so many bodies at him like once he got in the paint and even in the second half I think they were showing they were showing help as soon as he got to like the free throw line so it's like I think with a player like him who's not necessarily he didn't have the greatest shooting game his shot looked flat the whole game if we're being honest I think it is kind of going to drown out some of his strengths I still think he's going to be one of the top guys in this draft obviously but I think in a league like the NBA that's where you'll really get to see him kind of show what he's you know best at yeah. Okay, so we talked about some of the positive from the game. What do you guys think of Ace Bailey's passing? Because to me, that was one of the most interesting things from a scout's point of view. He, To me, he clearly has feel. Like, he has, like, he sees the right thing to do. But his body doesn't necessarily react 
on time. Like yeah. there was that one I remember, like that swing pass all the way to the corner that would have been like sick when he was already posting up, almost like a no look kind of pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it got picked off. But I'm assuming as the season goes on, that read is going to get quicker. And if he can pull off maybe four or five assists a game uh, in in like conference play, that's going to lead to a lot of wins. And I feel like almost elevate his draft stock, which is already super inflated to begin with. Yeah. I even watching Cooper in his scrimmage, I feel like the thing the the difference between Dylan, Cooper and Ace is I feel like they're just very well rounded. I'm not saying Ace isn't a well rounded player, like he clearly has the feel, it's just the execution. But I feel like Dylan and Cooper, they were able to kind of capitalize on advantages when they saw him from a passing standpoint. And Cooper, I feel like he did a really good job of that in his scrimmage. Now, obviously, they were playing Lincoln. But <laughs> I think I think with Ace, it's still coming together for him. And I think that's kind of why a lot of people have Cooper and Dylan above Ace as of now. Something I'm interested to see how it kind of plays out throughout the season is obviously Duke around Cooper Flagg has a lot more talent on like the supporting cast. For Rutgers... It's pretty much Dylan Harper and Ace Bailey, and there are some returning guys, but they have so many newcomers that are a lot more question marks than like returning players for Duke. So, do you think that's going to be like a positive or a negative in terms of the limits that, that might put on Rutgers as a team, like in terms of team success? I think it'll be a positive, just because it can be hard when you've been there and you feel like you were the leading scorer last year. We like we have something going as a team. Like we might not have been the best team, but we're building towards something. And then you get two superstars in, and now it's their show. And it's kind con- you kind of get that feeling like, what about us? Like what about what we were building? Like now we're just supposed to hand the keys over to these two freshmen. Mm-hmm. Some guys just don't like that, and it's it creates a weird dynamic within the locker room. I think with almost all their guys kind of being new and like everybody kind of coming in at the same time. You kind of have to let the talent more so speak for it. And as long as you don't have like a long history of being like a Rutgers leading scorer, like I, no one on the team averaged 20 for Rutgers for the last three years or anything. So it's kind of, you understand that the best players will get the best opportunities in a sense. Yeah, I think, well, can you say what your question was? It was just. Well, yeah, it's like, do you think Cooper Flagg and other maybe Duke draft prospects are going to get. Uh, praised more for team success, even though the supporting cast around them is easier to work with because the talent level in terms of like the floor of the team is higher? I mean, yeah, I think... I think Rutgers will kind of benefit from, like Cameron was saying, like they're kind of coming in and giving this team an identity. So I think that will benefit them in the long run. But at the same time, I think Duke... I don't think it'll necessarily hurt those type of prospects just because it's still there's such a high level program and even I think I don't know how to say this but like even off the court they're taking in so many new opportunities you know and like I think you they bring in their alumni pretty frequently and you know they always get the chance to like learn from NBA vets so I don't think that'll necessarily be viewed as a and I know I'm kind of equating this to something off the court but I don't see that being used as much of a Negative, I guess, if that makes sense. Another thing I want to ask you guys is how did you feel about how high Ace Bailey plays at times? What do you mean high? Like (laughs) (laughs) dribbling-wise? Yes, dribbling-wise. Okay. (laughs) Dribbling-wise. No, that was something I was thinking about coming... You thought I mean he sparked up for the game? <laughs> I was, I He's just fried of going for 30. <laughs> hey, some of them shots he did. Like, like, bro, are you high? I was, Especially you on that doing? fadeaway, I'm not going like, to lie. What but, are you doing? But no, that was something I was thinking about even, I remember after like the McDonald's scrimmage, because obviously with him being a taller player, it's like, what is it going to look like when he's getting pressured? And I think initially during that first half, I was like, it seemed like there were moments where he almost did look a little bit uncomfortable to me. But as the game went on, I, he looked a little bit more comfortable to me. But that was something where I was like, ball handling wise, I am curious because, you know, when he's playing against more, I guess, lockdown defenders, if you will, how much will that affect him like getting to his shot? Yeah, I kind of hope if if his jumper is working this season, if he's up at 
35 36% from 3. I just hope it doesn't turn into him settling for a lot of jumpers because like he might be the most dynamic athlete in this entire class. So if he becomes a good shooter, I just hope he doesn't become kind of like Michael Porter Jr. in a sense mm-hmm. where he's stopping at the three-point line in transition and just not utilizing that ability for him. Yeah, for me, that's his biggest weakness at the moment. Like, the passing is not the best at the moment. Like, he missed a couple passes, the one we talked about where he threw it to the corner. And then there was one where they doubled him off a of pick and roll. And he just sailed it over the guy's head. But to me, that is all stuff that can be fixed. Like, mm-hmm. he made the right read in the double team situation. He just threw the ball way too high. But playing high to me it really inhibits his like path to the basket like it for somebody who's that athletic at that size you would expect to see a lot more dunks a lot more layups through traffic and when you watch him he just doesn't necessarily do that a lot Mm -hmm. um I think Sam Vecini brought this up like even the path he takes to the basket sometimes is like more looping because he can't go through contact and go straight line to the basket he kind of has to go around it in a way and I think like that's a really big part of having a handle and I think that will be the difference between where Ace ends up it I think he has two different routes he can go he could be like you said Michael Porter Jr. Jabari Smith big really big guys who are kind of athletic and can shoot the ball or he could be like legitimately he has a chance to be Tracy McGrady Kevin Durant type of player who can create his own shot off the bounce, get to the rim, shoot. But if you can't get to the rim Mm -hmm. and we can put smaller players on you that get in your space and you're not comfortable dribbling the ball, I don't think he's necessarily worth a top five pick in this year's draft. But if he gets that fixed, like if he's – if that ever gets fixed, I think he could be probably the highest ceiling in the draft. That's a good point though, because I feel like even across like scout the scouting community, a lot of a lot of people have been saying like why they're so iffy on him is because when he's creating shots and like getting to these tough shots, like e- let's let's think about AJ DeBonso, like who's gonna be a player in next year's yeah. class. I saw a really good comparison where somebody said the difference is that AJ is getting into these shots out of comfort out of comfort, where it feels like at times Ace. I said, did I say AJ? Yeah, no, 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 no. You, okay. said, you said Okay, that. yeah. I feel like Ace is getting into these shots because he's being forced into it because people are cutting him off and he's like, okay, I'm bigger, I'm longer than you, I can just shoot over you. And I feel like, I feel like Ace's shooting will translate to the next level, but I think the creation is what's kind of the question mark. And I think that's a good point that you bring up because the I remember in the McDonald's game, there was a play, he was – he got turned like three times before he got to the rim and he just stopped at like the free throw line and he just shot a fadeaway. And it's like, obviously he's skilled enough to do that. But at the next level, I think that's what's going to separate him from a guy like the Bansa where it's like, he's one, he's big enough to overpower people, but at the same time, he's skilled enough where it's like, all right, I'm going to get to my step back. Not because you're making me, but because it's another way to keep you off your feet. Mm, yeah, his. I definitely agree with that. I think that's a really interesting comparison because to me they're very similar players, except for AJ has the passing field and he has the ability to get to the rim because he just plays a lot lower. He plays a lot more like a guard. You can tell Ace has probably been at like the four or five his entire life. He's kind of probably always been bigger than everybody. And I think that shows in his handle. And I think it's not like a lot. Like I don't need him to be – Allen Iverson or anything. Mm-hmm. I don't need him to be Kyrie Irving with his handle. I just need him to, one, play lower through contact, which playing lower will allow you to get around and through contact a lot better. But just simple moves that I think he can add that would help him a lot would be like a hang dribble like KD has, a really quick crossover, and being able to, like, some navigation dribble through a pick and roll. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like he gets stuck in the mid-range at times, kind of like you said, when he just, like, I don't necessarily think he's necessarily forced to take these shots. Like, he could pass the ball. Does he want to? I don't really think so. But he, he, I think he's just as comfortable as the boss to taking the, the mid-range shots. However, I think the, like, the bouncer has the ability to, he can get to the rim whenever he wants. 
ace camp at yeah. this time at this point in time. If you put a smaller defender that can turn him, he'll be forced to pass it or take a mid range. And I think at the next level, you can't do that because the defenders are just better. Yeah, you'll catch like a, a Julius Randle at the four who's not even known as a defensive menace, but like that's a strong four. So that's someone that he's gonna have to struggle with and maybe learn some more crafty moves for sure. Thanks for watching League Bound. If you enjoyed this clip, subscribe to our channel to never miss our takes. Check out our full show right here on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts.